Right, hello, welcome to the video. So, if you're a frequent viewer of the channel, you'll remember that I picked up my 718 Cayman GT4 two years ago. I actually bought it in 2022, April, May time, and filming this right now, it is end of April, nearly beginning of May next week. Two years on, 2024. So, I haven't actually featured my 718 GT4 on the channel for quite a while. I know the last video was a suspension secret upgrade, but visually, you can see I've made a lot of changes. After I picked up my 718 GT4, I did a 1,000 mile review on the car as well. Well, now it's just clocked over 20,000 miles. So visually, it's changed. I want to do an update review on what has mechanically changed as well. What I would change if I were to buy another 718 GT4, GT4 and uh, what the future plans are of this car. So before I owned this car, I had an M2 competition and that was my daily driver. Before that, I had an M140i, that was my daily driver too. So I would drive those cars everywhere. Um, I'd go to the shops, go see friends, family. Um, I'd drive to work once, twice, three times a week. And so when I picked up this car, the idea was also gonna be a daily driver. Um, it is the one car and has been the one car in my garage for the last two years. So that's how we've actually managed to pick up and cross over 20,000 miles in that two years time. I drive this car at least once or twice a week. But up until recently, I've actually picked up um, a daily. Um, it's just a, a car that I just drive around in so I don't have to rack up the miles too much on this car. It's a little bit more comfortable. And you can see by some of the mods that we're gonna talk about um, that I've done recently, it makes this car a little bit impractical now. Because it was gonna be my daily driver, one of the key aspects was it had to have the comfort seats. Um, they have been absolutely fantastic. I've done a 2000 mile um, drive to uh, the Swiss Alps last year, to the Nürburgring, um, and the ability to just kind of recline the seat back and forth was a godsend. The comfort seats have been fantastic, but if I were to buy a 718 GT4 again, and it's gonna be the way that I use it today, I would actually buy the car with the buckets. Um, if you didn't know, I had a GT4 RS press car from Porsche GB. In fact, this time last year in May, that car has the buckets. It's got the club sport pack on it. Um, and so I had to live with that car for three to four days um, with the buckets. And by learning how to get in and out of that car, um, and living with it for, I think I did a thousand miles in that car. I got the knack and I understood how to get in and out of the bucket. And actually I found they were okay to live with. So if I was to buy another GT4 um, going forwards, I would buy the buckets just because these cars are now becoming a weekend car to me. And I don't really have to use them as much of a daily as I did with my M2 and my M140. <laughs> Another thing I'd probably change if I were to buy another 718 GT4 is the gearbox. Now, mine is a manual. It has been amazing to live with. Um, I'm not lying, it has been fantastic. The engagement of it has been amazing. Um, you know, just going slowly at 30 miles an hour and changing gear, that's fine, that's all well and good. But when you're going 70, 80, 90 miles an hour on a track and then having to take one hand off the wheel and change gear, that is just thrilling. It's, it's incredible. Um, I have enjoyed living with a manual, taking it on track, um, going to the Nürburgring, that kind of thing. But I've done it now. I've had a manual. I've enjoyed the manual. I would like to enjoy, for an experience, a PDK car next. So if I were to pick up another 718 GT4, I'd go for a PDK. The manual is absolutely fantastic. The rev matching is brilliant. It's notchy. In fact, I can probably quickly show you. And the PDK is just lightning fast as well. So if I get in and just show you. It's a notchy gearbox. You can hear the mechanical changes. It's an absolutely fantastic gearbox. My favorite shift is from first to second to third. Like that was third there. It just naturally went back into the middle and then into third. Keen-eyed viewers and frequent watchers of the channel will see that I've now got silver wheels on my GT4 and I've inserted a decal as well. When I picked up this car, it had the gray um, kind of gunmetal um, wheels on the car and obviously didn't have the decal. I loved it, I thought it was good, um, but 
I think I wanted the car to have a little bit more pop. With the grey wheels, it just looked a bit monochrome. Uh, I wanted it to kind of pop a little bit more. And I think I, I went and changed it to the silver wheels. Now, if you haven't been following um, me on the uh, shorts on YouTube, um, I've been going ham on the shorts, the reels on my Instagram. Um, I've been doing a lot of short form content. And actually, I showed the upgrade to my silver wheels on that. So if you haven't watched that, you can go and watch the short version of that. And I did the install of the decals on shorts too. I honestly believe it has completely transformed the car. It just makes the car pop a lot more it looks more racy bring back silver wheels again it just looks really good now i did like the silver wheels with the silver car um, this is finished in gt silver if you didn't know um, but i wanted a little bit more contrast we've got kind of the black plastic all around the car and so i had the uh, decals installed monster wraps did that for me um, we installed the decals just to kind of break up that block of silver and just kind of give it a bit more of a contrast, more of a racy vibe to it. Yeah, silver wheels with some decals has completely transformed the look of the car for me. Um, and I, I honestly love it. It now gets a lot of attention, good and bad. It's however you want to kind of think about it. Um, driving down the motorway, I do get a lot of attention now. Um, but I think, you know, in a good way um, this car is a gt car it's got a wing on the back it looks very sporty and it just it, it, i love it i just love how the car now looks following on my uh, comment on shorts and reels there if you're not following me on instagram please do so below um the algorithms of social media are now just trying to push short form content way more you'll see that this video and my other videos maybe might get 5,000 views on average i can now upload a reel or a short and get 10,000. in fact maybe 200 500,000 views on my short form content um, so long form content is definitely dying um, but i'm i enjoy filming them hence why i am here right now um, but i am also going ham a lot more on short form content i'm trying all different kind of ranges of style of content at the moment so um, i am posting a lot on instagram if you're not following me on there please do so down below and if you're new to the channel um, and you're not following me on here please do subscribe down below as well as we'll be talking a lot more about this car and other kind of cars and things that i review on the channel too now you'll notice that my car um, looks significantly different in terms of ride height since I bought the car. So in the last video, if you want to go and watch that, um, I had a suspension secret fast road setup done on the car. So the car was also lowered five mil front and rear. Um, actually, according to such so according to suspension secrets, the car had also been lowered slightly at the front already. So um, suspension secrets lowered it by five mil. Um, if they want to lower it a little bit more, I have an extra five mil to go um, and then also five mil at the back too but if you look at the arch gap on the car now look at that for an aesthetics reasons um, the car just looks super planted now i haven't had any issues going over speed bumps um, since lowering the car i have also always had um, issues going over speed bumps when i was on stock ride height if you can still stick a fist underneath the front of the car you shouldn't have any issues getting over speed bumps <laughs> What I am going to be doing next is removing the front plinth on the car. Um, but basically, I hate how the front of the car looks with the license plate. It just makes it look ugly. Um, I will be removing the plinth and putting a sticker plate on it. The biggest issue that I've got yet to uh, resolve is that because it's got a front plinth is that Porsche would have drilled holes into the bumper of my car in order to fit that plinth on there. So I need to get the holes filled, basically fill the holes, um, get them painted or covered or whatever, and then I can put a sticker plate on the car. This isn't a sponsored video, but it's worth mentioning. I financed my uh, GT4 through Charles and Dean Finance. Jack Bracewell was the lovely chap um, over there who helped sort everything out for my car um, and I just wanted to shout them out basically um, if you are looking to finance a 981 uh, 918 Spider Carrera GT maybe all the way down to a, you know a Ford Fiesta ST have a look at Charles and Dean Finance they're a broker they've got access to many different lenders um, fill out the form down below in the description box um, that will take you to Jack um, or anyone else at Charles and Dean 
um, and they can just help talk you through kind of the options of different finances that you've got available over other brokers. They'd be the ones I'd recommend. <laughs> But I've also installed an exhaust on my car. Now, I actually never did a video on this because we um, talked about it in another video on someone else's car, Nor, my good friend. Um, he has the Guards Red GT4 with um, gold decals, gold wheels. He had or has the same setup. So I took the back box off. I completely removed that, put the stock back box back on, and we've actually removed the OPF filters. So now we have, and I don't know if you can see it, uh, there we go, you can kind of just see it there. We have Akrapovic OAPs, so Akrapovic um, link pipes. That has now removed the OPFs, and now the car is much louder. Because you've essentially removed a restriction in the car, um, the car is much louder, and it doesn't produce any drone whatsoever. It's also Akrapovic, so we've got titanium on the car, which is obviously lighter. It produces a specific type of tone, and I'm super happy with it. It is very, very loud. It now gives it the sound that I believe it looks um, like, and it kind of demands. Um, and then when I, and I'll talk about it in a second, um, when I close the valves, the car, the car sounds stock. <laughs> And the biggest, better benefit is that it still passes its MOT. Now you'd think removing the OPF, it would um, not pass an MOT, but actually it does. It still passes the um, emissions um, MOT um, just because it still has sports cats on there. And then yes, to touch on, I have a valve controller on my car as well. And this controller here basically just means that I can now open the valves permanently when I'm driving around or have them closed um, and back in stock form. And with the OAPs, it means that the car is now either permanently loud as I'm driving around or in stock form, the car is quiet. Um, and then with the valves closed, the car sounds stock and perfectly fine. And I think that is the perfect setup for anyone who's looking to make their car a little bit louder and just to kind of push the GT4 a little bit more to its kind of GTA track element side of it, rather than kind of being a daily driver. To demonstrate here, I've got the valve controller and currently the car is in stock mode. So this is a cold start. If I were to permanently open the valves, you can hear it now sounds way deeper and more boomy. It sounds like the GT car that it is built from factory. It sounds mean, it sounds like a track car. But if I wanted to car, put the car back into stock form where I don't want to be too but super loud and just anti-social for people, I can close the valves again and it sounds like a normal car. So now that the cold start has finished, I can kind of just demonstrate what the OAPs and the valve controller are kind of producing. So we're in stock form at the moment, the valves are permanently closed, and you can see it's ticking and sounding like a normal stock car. But then when I do kind of turn up to car events, or I'm on a track day and I want to be loud and I want to kind of have fun with my car, I can then open the valves, and it sounds a lot deeper and the car doesn't drone at all. So now if I were to rev the car in stock form. If I open the valves permanently and then rev it. And so because with OAPs, the volume of the car super loud is now a big difference between the volume and the car super quiet with the valves closed. So I need the valve controller to actually control when I want that car loud or quiet. But without the OAPs, you don't really notice the valves opening and closing that much from the inside, but from the outside, you obviously can. I hope that makes sense. So just to demonstrate, because of the OAPs having a big difference between loud and quiet, with the valves now, you can then really hear the difference between when they're open and when they're closed. So currently I have the button pressed, 
I'm at 2,000 revs, and as I speed up over 4,000, you'll hear the valves automatically open. So the button is still pressed, but they're opening and closing naturally. And as I slow down again and go below 4,000 revs, you can hear that the valves have now closed. But with the valve controller, I can keep that open. And there's a bit more of a howling sound that goes on. And obviously the higher up the rev range with the OAPs, the car basically screams and sounds like a proper GT car now. Absolutely brilliant. Just like the M140 was a gateway drug to the M2, this GT4 is a gateway drug to a GT3, or particularly that GT3 engine. As you saw from the GT4 RS press car that I had, I fell in love with that car. The engine right behind your head gave me an experience that was second to none. So to replace this GT4, it has to either be a GT3 or a GT4 RS. Um, obviously, given financial um, circumstances, if I were to say have a child, lose my job, etc., etc., then that wouldn't be feasible. But currently, as today stands, in two years' time or when I come to sell this car, I'd like to swap this for a GT3 or a GT4 RS. So, currently, that's where my mind is at. So, guys, if you like this video, please let me know. Um, like the video, subscribe down below if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you later in the next video. Oh wait, let me uh, open the valves. Now downshift, I'll roll the windows down.